morning. Good morning to everyone. A warm welcome to the European Open Science Symposium 2021. It's a pleasure to meet you all, although virtually this year. The European Open Science Cloud has finally entered its highly anticipated implement implementation phase. And this symposium offers an inclusive platform for all stakeholders to share objectives, vision, activities, and results in order to shape the future of the EOSC, the European Open Science Cloud. Um, this morning, we will have the opening keynote session starting now at 9 o'clock with speeches from the EOSC governance and the European Commission. Later at 11, we'll start the session on future EOSC calls in uh, Horizon Europe with presentation from the European Commission and uh, after lunch, a session on EOSC engagement and coordination mechanisms focused on national initiative session uh, or on national initiatives with various speakers and panelists focusing on the national contribution to user engagement uh, and uptake in, um, in EOSC. Um, before starting uh, the presentation, let me give you some figures uh, about the event. May I have my first slide, please? Thank you very much. Uh, more than 890 people have registered to, for the event. This is really uh, a great success. Uh, also with a good gender balance, as you can see in the slide, more than 50% of the attendees are from research performing organization as expected, and about 23% from service providers for research. Research founding organization are also present with uh, 44 attendees and SMEs and the industry with 30 attendees, also highlighting the interest of the private sector. Finally, the European Commission is well represented by 16 high-level representatives. This is a growing community with stakeholders from uh, a variety of uh, European regions, but also attracting interest from outside of Europe, essentially from all the five continents, as you can see from the geographical distribution in this beautiful slide. It's interesting to note, next slide please, that uh, more than half of the participants are outside the EOSC Association. In fact, almost 40% of the participants come from EOSC Association members, uh, another 5% are observers or provisional members that also will part in the, in the event. Uh, with 136, 37 actually, application to the call for contribution, we have uh, a packed and rich four days program focused on uh, priority areas for the EOSC implementation phase. All contribution received were very, uh, of very, of very high quality. And the program committee took into account balance and representation uh, in drafting the program. The large number of applications in two particular topics, technical challenges of EOSC, and implementation of EOSC made the organization decide to use parallel sessions. While we received 25 contributions for metadata and data quality, uh, uh, for metadata and data quality, 12 from uh, for sustaining EOSC, and 11 for research careers um, and curricula. This EOSC Symposium 21, taking place over four exciting days, provides really a key engagement opportunity for the EOSC community. Where do we come from? EOSC is expected to serve approximately 2 million researchers in Europe and progressively to expand its user base to include the wider public sector and the private sector. The shared vision between the European Commission, the member states and the large community is building the EOSC ecosystem collaboratively with all stakeholders through a core program uh, partnership as the best instrument to collectively achieve knowledge circulation, diffusion and uptake in a revitalized European research area. The EOSC ecosystem comprises many stakeholders and initiatives. Several of these are already members of the EOSC Association, which has the ambition to bring together more key stakeholders in this ecosystem. The contribution of the EOSC Association is going to develop in the EOSC ecosystem is the web of fair data and related services that will enhance the possibilities for researchers to find, share, and use publication data 
and software. In the USC acquisition, there will be more contribution coming from the other partners, stakeholders. Reduce fragmentation by federating existing research infrastructure. Previous slide, please. Enable interdisciplinary research to address societal challenges. Support open science and contribute to the digital single market. Um, offer the European researchers the digital resources they need to practice open science stimulate the emergence of a competitive European cloud sector, and finally, give Europe a global lead in research data management. The endeavor is not limited to linking data set, federating infrastructure, or aligning policies. It starts by linking people and organization across the EOSC ecosystem. Europe has all the expertise needed to, to progress rapidly in the development of this EOSC ecosystem, but it needs to bring additionally, uh, additionality and direc directionality at the European, national and institutional level in order to direct future research and innovation efforts and stimulate deployment and adoption. With the initial phase of the EOSC initiative ended in 2020, Europe now needs to strengthen and accelerate the development and implementation of EOSC to engage more widely with multiple stakeholders and to coordinate and synchronize the multiple relevant activities in the field that are still too fragmented among member states, national plans and research communities. The new governance model agreed by the European countries for the next EOSC implementation phase after 2020 will be tripartite including the um, European represent, uh, uh, EU represented by the Commission, the European Research Community represented by the EOSC Association, EU countries and countries associated with European Europe represented through the steering board. Next, please. The Association will sign a memorandum of understanding with the European Commission to progress the EOSC partnership which will bring together all relevant stakeholders to co-design and deploy European research data commons where data are fair. The MOU is a contractual arrangement and not a legal binding document that will be signed on June 23rd. The MOU established activities and commitments of the Commission, mainly through Horizon Europe actions, and activities and commitments of the EOSC Association, which represent the research community through the so-called additional activities. The EOSC Association mission, uh, next slide please, uh, is in the long run advancing the European Open Science Cloud to accelerate the creation of new knowledge, inspire education, spur innovation, and promote accessibility and transparency. These are beautiful words but we make it concrete by providing a single voice for advocacy and representation for the broader EOSC stakeholder community in Europe and promoting the alignment of European Union research policies and priorities with activities coordinated by the association through the strategic research and innovation agenda. To ultimately also enable seamless access to data through interoperable services that address the entire research data life cycle from discovery to storage, management, analysis, and reuse across borders and scientific disciplines. But this will not happen tomorrow. There will be some time to implement. A functioning uh, EOSC can only be emerged from a coordinated effort of uh, 2020, of Horizon 2020, Horizon Europe, and national institutional activities. Coordination of these activities is essential and has to be well defined and managed. And the EOSC Association will take a critical role in this process. The EOSC Association was established as a legal entity, an international non profit association, ESBL, founded in Brussels in July 2020, just to represent those eligible stakeholders wishing to formalize their role in EOSC. The first General Assembly on December 2020 elected the president and the board. You can see in the slides also the uh, picture of all of us. Karen Luiben uh, is president from Cesar. Myself, Maria Luisa Lavitrano from the University of Milano di uh, Bicocca. I'm director and also vice president. Klaus Tokeman from the Leibniz Information Center for Economic. Suzanne uh, with the, also the, the role of treasurer. Suzanne de Mouchel from the CNRS. Sarah Jones from Géant, Inacio 
Blanquer from the Universidad Politecnica de Valencia, Ronald Byrne from the Ireland National Research and Education Network, Bob Jones from CERN and Wilhelm Widmark from the University of Stockholm. Um, and Ute Gunsenheimer, which I welcome very much, which is the designated secretary general. Her former role was head of external relation and EU project at the European Spallation Source, ERIC, the ESS ERIC. And by the 1st of June, uh, 2021, uh, Ute started working with the EU Secretariat project to support the association. And formally, Ute will take on the role of secretary general starting on uh, 1st November, 2021. Ute later today will talk about the several activities that we started to have the association up and running, and in particular about the advisory groups and task forces that were structured to allow association members and others to help steer the implementation of EOS. And uh, with that, I wish to close my presentation and once more, a warm welcome to this exciting event. And now is a pleasure to give the word to Costas Glinos, Head of Unit Open Science of European Commission, who will give the welcome from the European Commission. Costas, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Luisa. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so I'm Costas Glinos. I'm in charge of Open Science in the, the Research and Innovation Director General of the European Commission. Allow me to welcome all of you into this major annual event uh, organized by the EOS community. Uh, let me start by presenting the regards and apologies of uh, Director Anna Panagopoulou, who would also have liked to be here, but was finally unable to. Let me also thank the EOS Secretariat, the EOSC Association and the Symposium Program Committee, who have developed a very attractive program for this symposium and have adapted this structure to the conditions that uh, are now imposed by the uh, pandemic, I hope not for uh, too long. Uh, Ute, uh, let me also congratulate you, Ute Gunseheimer, for taking on this very important function of Secretary General of the EOSC Association. Uh, her experience, uh, Ute's experience at this palation source will be precious for the Association to reach its objectives. The Commission supports an open science policy, in other words, a policy that builds trust in a digitally enabled, more performant, more robust research process, that it is open to scientists as well as to society, that cultivates trust between science and society. This open science needs its enabling infrastructure for data, for software, for publications, for services, for digital skills, a knowledge infrastructure overall. And this is what EOSC is about. It's the infrastructure for us to enable the transition to open digital science. We have come a long way to this. Many of you have participated uh, in the process of co-creating EOSC in 2019-2020. Uh, in addition to the specific implementations, that have been prototyping EOSC through projects. Today, EOSC has also a governance in place and has a strategy plan for moving forward the strategic research and innovation agenda. Maria Luisa has already uh, outlined the, the governance. And she also said that in a few days, uh, on 23rd of June, Commissioners Gabriel and Commissioner Breton will sign the Memorandum of Understanding between the Commission and the, the EOSC Association, putting in place a co-programmed partnership that ensures funding from the Commission till 2027 to the uh, EOSC infrastructure, to the EOSC initiative, in coordination with Member States' investments and Member States' initiatives. We have opted for a tripartite governance uh, that includes the EOSC Association, the Member States and the Commission, with the Member States of the Com and the Commission being grouped together in the EOSC Steering Board. The objectives of the Steering Board are to lead the policy developments that are required at the European and the national levels for achieving the strategic 
political and implementation objectives of EUSC, but also to pursue synergies and alignment of national policies and investments relevant to the EUSC. The uh, trios of Council Presidency countries and their representatives, so currently these uh, two trios of Presidency countries are Germany, Portugal, Slovenia, France, the Czech Republic and Sweden, play with, uh, together with the Commission a particular role to ensure the link with the political priorities of the Union. Talking about politically, about politics, the last 12 months have also been very successful for EOSC. Uh, we had the ERA communication in, on the 30th of September last year that uh, makes, that gives a special place to EOSC uh, and, uh, and, uh, and calls it a pilot action for the creation of the new European SSRI in Europe. Uh, we saw EOSC also uh, the, in the Council conclusions of the uh, Competitiveness Council of the European Union in December, where also a declaration by the German presidency of that time was presented about EOSC on called opening the door to a world of fair research digital objects. Uh, it was a declaration to the uh, Competitiveness Council. And more recently, uh, we saw the Portuguese presidency declaration just a couple of weeks ago uh, that, um, uh, that came out of the high-level workshop that was organized uh, on research data interoperability called Riding the Next Wave of Research Data and also uh, trying to uh, learn lessons from the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, raised a lot the political importance of open science, uh, but also the role of EOSC uh, which uh, was a ma major role for coordinating across member states to create the uh, European COVID-19 data platform. The governing board of EOSC and now the steering board has been an extremely important forum to put in place country coordination teams in order to be able to, um, to promote the sharing of data at the European level from the health and the research sectors of the, of the, of the different uh, member states. But also it was an, is an important platform for coordinating and evolving uh, partners internationally to this uh, COVID-19 data platform. So with the pandemic, the research community has demonstrated how efficient we can be when we can work together and we have a common objective. The uh, European COVID-19 data platform that was launched about a year ago illustrates very well in practice how fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, and open data can work in, pra in practice. But it also demonstrated the great challenges that we still face. Most data today are not fair, are not findable, are not accessible, especially are not interoperable or reusable. Interoperability is very hard to achieve uh, for, for many reasons, but especially for data coming from different domains and with the COVID-19 pandemic, we had major challenges and we still face major challenges in combining data coming from the clinical settings or the health sectors on the one hand and from research on the other. This is why we have to move now quickly from prototyping the EUSC to really operationalizing it. We will be successful if we use EUSC as the framework to involve all the research communities as service providers from the research performing organizations, the universities, the research centers, to the research infrastructures, the e-infrastructures, service operators, funders, or research organizations that are, have been mandated by the different countries to represent them in the EOSC association, as well as, of course, member states and the commission through the steering board. Success will also depend on the change of culture among researchers towards openness. This is our major challenge. EOSC is an infrastructure or an ecosystem, if you want, to underpin this change. And uh, us, we from the Commission, are committed to make this happen. I wish you a very successful conference. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Costas, for giving us uh, this uh, 
overview on what the commission, um, how the commission can support the vision of the commission on EOSC and also how the commission can support uh, the process and mostly uh, the expectation of the commission. Now, um, I open the floor for questions, if there are questions, since Costa is going to um, leave um, in, in, a, um, in a few minutes and he will not be with us until the end of the session. So therefore, if there are questions for Costas. Yes, feel free to, um, to send your questions in via the chat. Okay. Uh, there is a question uh, from Nicolas Villacorta. Um, are you still progressing with the public procurement action? Yes, we're progressing, but um, the, um, still in early days. And it is a question that uh, you could ask uh, when you have more ample time later on to uh, Lena Munari, for example, from uh, DigiConnect. Uh, I see um, Francoise uh, Genova saying not many people from the first right in the wave in the room today. I'm not sure, I didn't look at the names, uh, but um, uh, I hope there would be more if there are not many. And uh, yes, uh, Francoise, it's not a coincidence that uh, we, we called the, uh, this second um, uh, paper uh, about data, uh, the uh, writing of the next wave, so following up from that first wave 10 years ago. Costas, thank you for, for your... Um... Uh, sorry, the, the, the question from Francoise, maybe I confused uh, some people, it was, uh, it, it, it was a uh, personal to me. Uh, so my others have not seen it, I didn't, I didn't realize. But fine, fine. But, but still, but still, my comment, my, my, my comment is is correct. Okay. Uh, Costas, I don't want to anticipate too much uh, um, questions that will raise. Uh, I'm sure at the end of the of the meeting. But uh, <clears throat> what do you expect from uh, member uh, from from the uh, uh, members of the association? As, as far as uh, re regarding the, um, uh, the, their um, other activities uh, to, <clears throat> to, um, um, for complementing the contribution of the, of the Commission? Well, we expect obviously uh, involvement. Uh, we, I mean, the, the challenges are clear. They are reflected in the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda. We have worked on those for two years now. So, uh, the, uh, but these challenges will only be successfully faced if uh, there is involvement from uh, all stakeholders. So we call everybody to become a member of the uh, EOSC Association. And we need balanced involvement that takes uh, into account the interest of all the, uh, of all the different types of, uh, of stakeholders. You said, uh, Maria Luisa, earlier that uh, more than half of the participants today are not yet members, uh, do not come from organizations rather uh, that are members. So I hope uh, in, the, uh, in the next symposium, and I'm sure actually in the next symposium, we'll see an even higher percentage. Although I have to say that the progress till today has been great. So the association was created uh, only a few months ago. It had its uh, inaugural meeting in, uh, in December. And uh, you already have, I think you said, about 200, uh, 200 members. So uh, that, that's a very promising, that's a very promising start. And uh, we expect uh, commitment to really do this all together. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thank you very much. There are um, two more questions. Um, one from Grace Barnes. You mentioned the importance of cultural change towards openness. Can you expand on the role of EOSC and what other factors you see as critical for achieving this? Yes, um, indeed. So we, uh, we uh, openness, uh, it's, we have a, a research culture today that we want to change. 
And this research culture does not reward the right things. Uh, it does not reward collaboration uh, it, sufficiently. It does not reward openness. Uh, the, um, uh, there is an uh, excessive weight of uh, publications in, in high impact journals, the so-called G factor as a preponderant factor to the success of a researcher. And we want to change that. To change that, we need to put in place also an infrastructure that allows collaboration, that allows sharing of data, sharing of other digital artifacts. And this is in uh, allows sharing of uh, um, uh, publications, all kinds of research outputs. And in our uh, plan, EOSC is this infrastructure, is the infrastructure that allows collaboration and sharing. So it's the infrastructure that supports open science. Uh, thank you very much. There are other questions, but I think that we should uh, move to the next presentation and I will keep these questions at the end of the, uh, of the session today. So Costas, thank you very much for, uh, uh, for, um, for your presentation. Thank you. And now I'm, I'm very pleased to give the floor, give the words actually, to Ute Gunsenheimer, uh, that will give the welcome from the EOSC Association. Ute is the designated Secretary General of the EOSC Association. Ute, the word is yours. Thank you very much, Maria Luisa, for your kind introduction. And good morning and a very warm welcome from the EOSC Association to all the participants in today's symposium. I'm happy to be with you and to provide you with an overview of what has happened within and around the EOSC Association in the last 12 months. And there we go to the next slides. EOSC has been an exciting journey for many of you and you've started it much, much earlier than I did because I only embarked on the 1st of June as the designated Secretary General in this journey. And I'm looking forward on continuing and working with you so to speak, up to the clouds in the next couple of years. So who am I? And that's the next slide. In the last or the last eight and a half years, I spent at the European Spallation Source as the head of external relations and EU projects. The European Spallation Source is an international research infrastructure currently being built in Lund in Sweden. It's a membership of 13 countries, European countries, investing 2 billion euros in building the next um, world leading neutron source. And as my job title suggested, I was in charge of the stakeholder relations and I'm really looking forward on continuing and profiting from this experience I've gained at the ESS. And also I managed and coordinated the EU projects there. And the ESS, for example, is part and member in PANOSC, one of the ESPRI cluster projects currently being implemented in Horizon 2020. On the next slide, we see here that EOSC has taken off the association off ground. And I guess it's not yet um, on full attitude yet, uh, altitude yet. Um, the mission, and Maria Luisa has already mentioned that, is advancing the European Open Science Cloud to accelerate the creation of new knowledge, inspire education, spur innovation, and promote accessibility and transparency. And we are going to do that by providing a single voice for advocacy and representation for the broader EOSC stakeholder community in Europe. Um, to promote the alignment of European Union research policy and priorities with activities coordinated by the association in the framework of the SRIA and to ultimately enable seamless access to data through interoperable services that address the entire research data lifecycle from discovery to storage, management, analysis and reuse across borders and scientific disciplines. And um, what you see on the next slide is that the lights have been all green for EOSC in the last couple of months and the many milestones have been reached. And um, if we go through the long list is it was founded, as mentioned, in July. It was um, on the 29th of July last year, so almost a year now, that the four founding members, Cesar, Jean, Gar and Cisic, established the AISPL, the International Association under Belgian Law, 
already three months later in September, the royal degree was obtained. And then at the end of the year, um, the, general, the first General Assembly took place, the president and the board have been elected. And um, there is a broad representation, I will go into the details, of around 150 members and 60 observers representing research performing, research funding and service providing organization. And the next big milestones, and both Costas and Maria Luisa have pointed it out, is next week on the 23rd of June in the framework of the Research and Innovation Days when the Memorandum of Understanding between the Association and the European Commission for this Horizon Europe Partnership will be signed. And you can only, let's say, draw influence and shape the um, partnership um, when being a member of the EOSC Association, and it's basically the call for increased membership here. Now, that's the distribution of membership. As you can see, we have, and it's the status of May, we have 153 members being um, distributed among mandated members, official members, those who are provisional, meaning they have been endorsed by the board, but not yet ex um, uh, approved by the General Assembly and candidates. And for observers, we have 47 observers, 15 provisional, and that I guess means one um, who's in the candidate pipeline. Um, what's um, on the task of the EOSC Association? It's as busy as this uh, flight schedule over there on the picture. It's to develop and govern federating the core, manage the AAI, the PID policies, the compliance framework, and the trusted certification. Outreach to stakeholders, and that is what we're also doing here today. As we heard, it's not only the association members, but the today's participation is so much broader, and that's important to be engaged and um, communicate with all the stakeholders inside and outside the association, monitor services and transaction, manage the EOSC trademarks, and contribute to the Horizon um, EU policies. Um, on the next slide, a slide you see basically the core message. And I mean, the strength of EOS is its community. This is you and all of you who have been on this journey so much longer than I have been, is um, that we work together in order to achieve um, the European Open Science Cloud. And the priorities now that will be presented, and that's on the next slide, um, are working on the advisory groups and the task forces. And many of you have already contributed to um, shaping um, what will be presented in the next couple of days. Um, these are the task, uh, task forces draft charters. And what you see here are the five members of the board who have been the coordinators for the five advisory groups that have been established. And associated to each of the advisory groups, you have a number of task forces. And for the implementation of EOS, so it's Susan de Mouchel from CNRS. Technical challenges on EOS is Ignacio Blanke from UPV. And then metadata and data quality, Sarah Jones from Geant. Research career and curricula, it's Wilhelm Wittmark from Stockholm University. And Bob Jones from CERN for Sustaining EOS. Those advisory groups, oh, sorry, one back, please. Yeah, thanks. Um, those topics, and in particular the task forces, uh, draft charters, they will inform the agenda of this symposium in the next days, in particular day three and day four, so Thursday and Friday, where, um, as I said, many of you have already contributed to um, shaping the drafts of the charters. And then once we've presented um, and discussed the charters with you, um, there is a to-do on the list, and that's a call for action to become a member of those task forces. So um, after the symposium, this call will be opened and you can sign up and apply for membership in those task forces because those task forces will actively contribute then to um, shaping, hopefully, and we hope to do that as much as possible, the next work program for Horizon Europe. Because now 
I guess next week, the work program for 2021-2022 will be launched. However, the draft for the next one, 2023-2024, starts right after the summer. And we want to be in the position to basically to use this opportunity as much as possible to influence it. And with that, we come to my last slide. What's basically my journey going to look like in the next days and weeks and months um, is to establish a trustful relation to all stakeholders of the entire EOSC ecosystem, inside and outside the association, and to provide regularly updates and communication with all of you. Support the implementation of the Horizon Europe Partnership and in particular the establishment and implementation of the monitoring framework. So that's a big task um, that we will hear about um, later today. Setting up an office um, at, uh, for the EOSC Association here in Brussels and organize the transition of the EOSC Secretariat, who's also hosting and managing this conference um, to the association and hiring of staff to build up the organization. And there the vacancy for a chief technology officer will be published next week. And then the call is open to, um, for this next recruitment. I invite everyone then to have a look at it. For the time being, you can contact me since I'm affiliated to Technopolis under the EOS Secretariat project. Um, you can reach me at ute.gonsenheimer at technopolis-group.com. And I'm looking forward to being in touch with all of you in the very near future. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Ute, for your nice presentation of the EOSC Association and uh, its activities. Uh, we will reserve the, uh, the question for you at the end of the, of the session. And now I'm pleased to give the floor to Lina Munari, Deputy Head of Unit Science, Open Science and Digital Modeling of the DigiConnect European Commission. Lina will talk about EOSC and its future, next steps towards EOSC as a, an e-science enabled for Europe. Lina? Yes, uh, good afternoon. Oh, sorry, good morning from my side as well. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting as well uh, us for the symposium. Uh, this, I think, must be the third symposium, if I'm not correct, if I'm not wrong, that I have participated. So it's very, very nice to see how this yearly event takes place and actually really unites and, uh, and, and, and connects people over the quite impressive program of the next couple of days. So I wanted to talk about, well, exciting title, EOS can its future and next steps towards EOS as an e-science enabler for Europe and DigiConnect uh, as we want, uh, as we work jointly on this file with uh, DigiRTD with our colleagues from the unit of uh, Costa Ciclinos who just gave you uh, introduction from his side. Um, we at the DG Connect obviously are, are a little bit more looking at the technology side of things. However, it's quite important uh, and I would like to highlight that when we talk about the science, when we both talk about digital technologies, it's still about science, it's still about research and it's still about people. So everything that comes with the E in front means that we live in a digital age, but the science does not change in a way. You know, we're still doing science in the same way and we're still doing research in the same way as we've always done. It's only the tools that change. And this is from our side, the sort of contribution that we, we hope to, uh, to with our uh, funding, but also with our support for the community to bring forward that embrace the digital uh, transition, which is taking place uh, in order to make better science and, and, and research. So can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so the status updates sort of from our side, um, obviously uh, the InfraEOSC projects that have been funded from the Horizon 2020 programs, they will continue uh, because they, many of them have just started. Last uh, call of InfraEOSC uh, 07 and 03 uh, calling for uh, the universal access and for the service provision have just started. So as we're always a few years ahead, with our planning, uh, we should obviously not lose the, the, the moment of, of actually benefiting and looking at these projects that were designed a few years ago and have just started in the beginning of this year. 
including uh, the big project for uh, EOSC Future, which uh, is linking sort of and bringing sort of the torch to, to the next stage of, uh, of, of EOSC implementation through the project. As has already been mentioned, the Horizon Europe work program is about to be adopted. I'm not sure if my colleagues can confirm uh, that whether it will be adopted these days. Uh, I heard a, a day of today, but uh, I'm sure that we will formally hear when, when it will be adopted this week or, or, or the coming days before by the, by the, by the research and innovation uh, days, which is uh, the major event on, of the community uh, next week. Uh, where, of course, there is a whole menu of, uh, of new activities for the community uh, embracing uh, EOSC as a web of fair data and services. Um, thank you very much, Ute. Uh, EOSC Association is operational. I think everybody knows that by now. And of course, EOSC Association is a sort of, for us as well, in a way, one place to phone. You know, when people sometimes from outside Europe, they're asking who should we, it was years ago when there wasn't really like a single phone number when you wanted to call EU from outside. In the same way, from the commission side, we now know who to call when we want to talk to ESC Association. So in a way, the ESC Association is, or when we want to talk to ESC communities. So in a way, the ESC Association is of course the kind of gatekeeper of the of the of the community, but I would like to keep a little bit of different definition for the gatekeeper. Uh, rather than holding the gates, it's more keeping the gates open. And I think this is very important. Ute was also calling for for joining. Um, please take that opportunity. This is really the way uh, how the structured dialogue can happen. Uh, in a form of a real structured dialogue that will be uh, conducted through the EOSC partnership, uh, where the EOSC association has a direct dialogue with the commission on the implementation of the partnership and its progress, together with the member states uh, representatives coming into the star, uh, steering board. However, uh, to be a member of EOSC association does not mean that that's the only way to contribute. I think Obviously, we all recognize by now that this is such an endeavor to make EOS happen, that it will not happen only at the Commission, it will not happen at DGRTD, it will not happen only in DG Connect, it will not happen only in EOS Association, it will happen at every work desk of every researcher and every institute that is actually contributing to tomorrow's science and research. So therefore, these structured dialogues are important but I think the real change starts at the grassroots, at really every researcher who is contributing, who is doing their daily job, confusing questions, of course, as you are in the chat, how can we, how can we participate? What is the role, et cetera? This is all part of the discussion. I mean, it's, we, we need to have these questions and there needs to be a way of, of discussing these issues. And this stakeholder forum these days is one of those places where everybody's word can be heard and contribute to the, the forthcoming discussions. Can I have the next uh, slide, please? So, to the courtesy of my colleagues at EGRTD, uh, a very nice slide on the EOSC implementation. Sometimes simple things make life easier. So the EOSC phase that ended in 2020 uh, was more based on Horizon 2020 calls and grants. There was no partnership. There was no co-programming of the activities. There was the traditional way of drafting the work programs from the commission side. Uh, consulting stakeholders and then together in the program committee uh, presenting uh, the next versions of the program, uh, next work program as, as it was uh, done and is still done in, in very many areas. Now this partnership approach, uh, EOSC is one of the partnerships that will be signed for the next seven years um, between the commission and the EOSC association representing the community. And this of course changes the game because now we have a co-program partnership, which really is co and is programmed. So it's, we are jointly uh, expecting your input, structured input of where are the next gaps of where research and innovation activities should be funded from uh, Horizon Europe. Um, 
the roadmap that was set into 18 to 20 to uh, take that stage forward has now been sort of replaced or let's say uh, it is the next version of the kind of roadmap which is called the strategic research and innovation agenda. It is in principle set for the whole seven years, which is the current framework of Horizon Europe and our funding uh, program uh, period. However, it's not uh, uh, an agenda which is set in the beginning and it will be consulted uh, and never changed. So the idea of the agenda, of course, is that it evolves. There's talk taking around which activities have been uh, achieved. Is there some uh, obsolete ones? Is there some that need some rethinking? And this is the very, very important contribution that we're expecting from the community. More effort to put into drafting the next version of the SRIA, more focused and more structured will also be the progress towards uh, implementing else and this I'm saying only from of course from the funding perspective of the EU because there's a lot of funding coming from different other uh, member states uh, the national funding etc but we hope that this RIA would sort of represent the view of Europe so that everybody can take bits and pieces of it and implement them not only through Horizon Europe work programs but also in your own research agendas uh, that you, you, you develop in, in your own countries and in your own areas. The governance, um, we had uh, uh, um, uh, uh, two years of, uh, of, uh, of a very uh, intense period of governance through executive board and the governance board, representing uh, the sectors uh, of researchers and, and scientific community on one hand, on the other hand, the member states representatives. Actually, it was a tripartite as well, because the stakeholder forum is the third party in it. And this same kind of tripartite governance has been taken over to the next stage. But of course, as you can see, it's much more stakeholder driven uh, than before. So we are really taking, in a way, a little bit the backseat here, and we are really waiting for you to drive it. And to let us know where we should go, because you are the ones who actually uh, know where we should be going. You are the ones at the end of the day who know what you need. Uh, we might help you on the road. We might put all kinds of resources together, but just remember that the new governance is, is yours. It is not top led from the commission. It is very much led by uh, the stakeholders and all these new ways of participating that have been put in place for this current phase stretching up until the end of this programming period 27 but, and even beyond because of course uh, life doesn't stop at the end of uh, Horizon Europe uh, framework program at 2027. Can I have the next slide uh, please? So our current environment from where we look at uh, the EOSC implementation at DG Connect is of course through the projects. Um, we have a relative legacy of projects that are still finalizing uh, or are, are, are have finalized and, uh, and we have started uh, a cluster of new ones. Um, EGIAs, DICE and Open Air are responding to the part of the EOSC 07, uh, Infra EOSC 07 call on computing, on data infrastructures and on, um, on scholarly communication. The two other projects there, C Scale and Reliance, were responding to the call that was looking at the, at the, at the new ways of, uh, of earth observation data and, uh, and analytics and, and how that can be brought under, um, uh, under, um, under EOSC. Um, we direct, directly managed from DG Connect still the three, first three projects, considering their relative weight and, uh, and, and, and size. And, uh, and because we also want to see how the policy agenda is, is, is guided around the results of, this, of these projects. Um, whilst the two smaller ones are these days um, managed by the Research Executive Agency uh, uh, in, in, in Brussels. We have very close cooperation with the Research Executive Agency and the colleagues there to see how these projects also deliver in order to follow the, the procedures, but some of the projects we kept uh, kept in-house. Um, last but not least, of course, EOSC Future. 
uh, a lot of eyes are looking at the future over 40 million funding going for the next 30 months, started in April. Um, the EGI, DICE, and Operator Plus, C Scale, and Reliance are supposed to uh, draft, and are not supposed to, they are obliged to have a formal collaboration agreement with the EOSC feature so that all this service provision plus the work which is done on EOSC Core and EOSC Exchange and the air, other areas of EOSC feature uh, skills, community engagement, strategy, that they're all actually uh, working towards a joint work plan in addition to their own work plans. Um, on the right hand side, a very, uh, well, it looks more like an atom in Brussels, uh, the atomium in Brussels, but this is just to indicate that that uh, EOSC is, uh, is, is of course not only about the so-called old, old uh, e infrastructures, it's so much about uh, science clusters that in the EOSC future have come together uh, to really contribute very largely to start really making EOSC operational and just to start testing through a uh, big scale of science projects, um, uh, test projects on how these uh, these tools can be put in practice and uh, and how they can really come to the benefit of the bigger communities that the science clusters are bringing together. Can I have the next slide, please? So they ask future pillars. This is just to, and this is again credit of the of the project itself. Of course, this slide. Um, this is just to indicate uh, the wide remit of this project. In a way, it's sort of a catch-all project and everybody's looking at them to do everything for them. Again, please uh, don't take it that way. Uh, uh, help them and help them achieve the objectives as well. Uh, even though you're not a member of the consortium, these actually uh, are the areas of cooperation where we're all looking at, uh, at, at in, the, in, the, in the forthcoming uh, years through the partnership. So, of course, there's the infrastructure consolidation started already several years ago, getting closer. All the infrastructure, major infrastructures plus the science clusters are now under the same project, including the RDA, uh, which activities we used to fund from a separate project, but now they're all funded from uh, the, the one and same umbrella. Uh, of course, the, the drive, uh, the transition towards the open science, which is at the core of the activities, uh, not only of this project, but the entire horizon uh, uh, Europe work, uh, framework, uh, framework program. Um, and the scientific community's content and users, more than anything, of course, uh, are, are associated, as I explained. The project is uh, built around six pillars. Uh, connection integration, policy strategy, engagement communication, skills and training, growth and innovation, um, and excellent science interdisciplinarity. So, going next, beyond 23, there was already a question about the EOSC procurement. Uh, that's still very much uh, at the center of the activities, and now we're really looking at the next future after EOSC future. Um, at this point of having funded EOSC activities and especially building the core infrastructure and the service uh, infrastructure to separate uh, research and innovation uh, activities, uh, actions or projects, we uh, are now shifting from a grant-based approach to procurement to really procure this level of central uh, core infrastructure and services that can be uh, sustained. Uh, over the years, and it can really provide for the researchers this fully operational, secure cloud-based uh, infrastructure that would offer professional services and superior user experience for a very large number of users with the functionalities in principle available 24-7. Um, it is in principle EU-owned and operated, but of course, when the Commission procures uh, this kind of uh, of of of, uh, of infrastructure, uh, we do we do not procure it for ourselves. We will operate it. Um, it will be all done in open source, uh, so that anybody can use it, can plug it in, can can use it in their own environments. The design will be in very close collaboration with the community. Uh, and it will, of course, add up the EOSC future legacy. So we are at the same time very close to looking at what the EOSC uh, future uh, uh, is, is delivering in terms of core infrastructure and, um, and the services infrastructure. And then we're building on this uh, when we launch the procurement in the beginning of next year. It takes about eight months in-house to do this. So this coming end of this year, uh, we are very busy in, in designing 
um, the, the procurement and the tender specifications, and that's in a very open collaboration with the, with the community for whom it's, uh, it's intended. To. Can I have my last slide, please? So is there, a, what is the future of AESC? Um, just to highlight what I said in the beginning, the future of AESC is not at the hands of the commission. We will, even though we do a lot, uh, it's still a, a drop in the sea because uh, the future of AESC is, is, is us and it's you and it's the future, let's say even generation patients who will benefit out of the science and these new ways of working that can speed up uh, and, and make science even better and, and even, even more uh, beneficial for the entire society. So with these words, thank you very much. And if there are any questions, please can I remind you there is a specific session on the, on the AOS part of the Horizon Europe work program in the afternoon. So, so all those questions that you would like to ask about the work program, maybe it's better to ask them in that session uh, so that we can, we can have a, a dedicated space for discussing the work program. And if, you're, if, you're, if you have any, any other questions, uh, I'm happy to take them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lina. Uh, you want to take some question now or we want to um, if you are staying with us, yeah, yeah, I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying for a while at least. Yes. Yeah, there is a burning question from Costas Kumantaros, uh, uh, who asks whether who will do this procurement: European Commission or the Association? You want to answer? Okay. So the direct procurement, the way it's been entered in the work room, is the procurement done by the Commission. But as I, as I, as I said, uh, the procurement is not done in-house, in, in, in closed doors and, 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 and for, for the community, for the white smoke to, to arise. So um, the, the, um, the procurement will be done in-house, but as I said, uh, the, the road to, to, to the final specifications of the tender will be done in a close collaboration with the association and with all the stakeholders, including those um, uh, parts and those the, 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 the projects that are contributing to the current uh, environment uh, shifting. So uh, ESC uh, future and, and also the, the, the other projects that are involved. So uh, we aim to, to provide, of course, added value, not to reinvent the wheel and, and to, to procure those parts of, of, the, of the elements that are still needed for it to make uh, become not anymore a research and innovation project, but an operational uh, operational system of systems, as uh, Elsk Future likes to call it, and I like to call it the same way. Uh, thank you, Lina. Now I think that it's time to uh, give the floor to Joao Moreira uh, from the Portuguese Science Technology Foundation and the Elsk Association, who will talk about the European Open Science Cloud from the perspective of the Portuguese EU presidency. Thank you very much for your visit. Uh, just a second so that I can share the screen. Um, so good morning, uh, everyone from, from Portugal. Uh, my name is uh, João Moreira and uh, I'm the head of scientific information at the National Funder in PT. And uh, I've been closely mm. following uh, beyond uh, EOS development since uh, November 2018. And uh, of course, it is a pleasure to, to be here uh, in, in this session. So uh, in my talk, I will address not only the, 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 the view of the Portuguese presidency on the EOSC, but also uh, talk about our draft national EOSC ad adoption plan. Um, and um, my my first uh, my first words uh, from the the presidency uh, are of course of uh, gratitude and recognition for all the work developed so far. Uh, it's it's truly rewarding and amazing to see uh, so many players working together to address a common goal. Um, 20 years ago, uh, the member states uh, signed the Lisbon uh, strategy. In a nutshell, the, 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 it broadly aimed to make Europe by 2010 the most competitive um, and the most dynamic knowledge-based economy in the world. 
uh, we did not make it in uh, in 10 years, but Lisbon strategy left seats in framework programs or for research and technology uh, development. Uh, we silently uh, also in from the period uh, 2014 to 2019, EOSC was under the Commissioner uh, Moeda's leadership. I think that the point uh, we are uh, trying to make is that we are far better prepared uh, uh, to make uh, this strategy happen uh, now. We, uh, the Portuguese presidency, uh, acknowledge uh, new ways of, uh, of science, uh, cost of cost of mentioned the problems that we are facing today. And, uh, and the conduct of research is not in full fruition of the digital age. So we have a lot of opportunities uh, to improve it. And, uh, but this potential uh, will only be realized if research infrastructures evolve to, to allow scientists to explore in an easy to use and integrated environment, the relevant data being uh, produced. Uh, EOSC is, of course, key to exploit digital capabilities at the service of science. Uh, the Portuguese presidency also acknowledged the EOSC benefits, uh, the improved trust, quality and productivity in science, uh, the development of innovative services and, and products, and um, also the improved impact of research in addressing uh, societal changes. The, 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 the Portuguese presidency supports the foundations and, and the path uh, to, that brought us here. Uh, we agree with the guiding principles. Uh, we acknowledge the implementation challenges and support the ASK implementation roadmap. And uh, we also uh, agree uh, with the, the EOSC governance uh, that has been also uh, addressed uh, before. During the, the Portuguese presidency, besides the riding the, the wave uh, workshop, and besides working on the dossiers that uh, go through uh, several presidencies, uh, we were able also to, to include in the council conclusions uh, or to address specific aspects that we find very important, namely uh, re regarding rewarding and assessment and also uh, open science principles in research career and uh, especially the early career. So um, moving, moving now to the, to the second part of, of my talk, I would like to to uh, talk about the National uh, European Open Science uh, Adoption Plan. This is uh, obviously a draft at uh, this stage. Uh, and before, I just uh, would like to give you some context, a few seconds. Uh, so FCT is the national funder, uh, is, um, is public, uh, publicly funded uh, by the Ministry uh, for Science, Technology and the higher Innovation and uh, higher Education. And uh, we aim not uh, less than to be a global reference for research and innovation and uh, to, to ensure that the knowledge generated by the scientific research and the being social and economic mm -hmm. development. Uh, so FCT supports uh, uh, the whole uh, spectrum of research. You can see here uh, the funding instruments uh, uh, that uh, we support, not only people and ideas, but also research infrastructures. And uh, besides funding, we also have a unit, which is the unit I work for, uh, that provides technology for knowledge, meaning uh, uh, infrastructures and advanced services, and uh, those are focused on these uh, five areas, connectivity, uh, collaboration, knowledge, computing, and security. So with regards to the, to the, to the, to the, to the plan, uh, we uh, usually have a, a try to have a 360 degrees approach, and this is based on these five pillars, the policies and regulations, the funding, services, infras and training and dissemination. With regards to the policies, like many other funders, 
uh, we started uh, uh, with the uh, open access. Uh, we defined the policy in uh, 2014. Uh, we committed to plan S earlier th this year, and uh, we will uh, launch uh, our research data policy. And uh, we expect to include other open science um, aspects in um, in future uh, uh, SCT policies. And of course, uh, EOSC is completely instrumental to enforce these policies. Uh, with regards to funding, the strategy that we have been having, uh, like many other funders, is to use the funding instruments to enforce compliance with uh, open science principles, or in this case, with European Open Science Cloud. The idea uh, behind this is that if we fund research infrastructure, for example, we can ask them to uh, gradually comply with European Open Science Cloud um, interoperability and other aspects. Uh, with regard to services, we, we, we divided them in Open Science and the EOSC related. Uh, the uh, Open Science services uh, in a nutshell are presented in this slide. We have the National Consortium for Scientific Information. We have community-owned infrastructures, uh, open access uh, journals platforms, uh, institutional repositories, uh, research data services, and also open educational resources. Uh, with regards to the EOSC-related services, we are thinking about these three, uh, ha having uh, uh, the landscape uh, that actually is being fund uh, funded and carried out under the EOSC Synergy project, but uh, we should uh, follow up uh, even if the project ends. Then uh, we need also uh, services for EOSC alignment and of course monitoring uh, the EOSC election. With regards to e-infras, in this uh, slide you can see the triad computing, data and network. Uh, these are and the national initiatives that we try as much as possible to align with the international uh, ones. And um, the idea is that um, we uh, um, integrate our national uh, infrastructures in kind of a, a natural way, uh, because if we are uh, if we are a node of a, a bigger infrastructure, then uh, gradually it will uh, align uh, with EOSC. And then we have the, the roadmap infrastructures. Some of them are related to uh, European infrastructures that we hope that uh, gradually will align with EOSC. And, and for those that are not, uh, have not a correspondence, uh, the, the EOSC related, related services that I mentioned will for sure help them to align with the EOSC. And um, of course, the aspects of training and simulation are very important. Uh, we want to make the best use of the resources available. And therefore, um, we uh, will for sure use the massive online open courses for the generic uh, training and then have uh, webinars or classroom specific uh, 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 training. And of course, uh, since uh, many years now, we have been mm -hmm. promoting um, uh, conferences and, and fora for discussing these important uh, issues. Um, um have um, one or two additional slides. And uh, this relates to the, the governance. Uh, and alignment uh, with regards to, to governance, uh, we believe that we should have three a layer approach, uh, the central fun functions, the access and preservation platforms and the e infrastructure commons. And of course, we uh, will always uh, try to be aligned with the best uh, practices and standards and initiatives across Europe and the world. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Joao, for uh, giving us the, uh, the um, opportunity to know how the uh, Portuguese Science and Technology Foundation uh, is um, contributing actually to the open science and uh, 
also the activities towards the um, toward the EOSC. And now I'm pleased to give the floor to Paolo Quaresma, uh, uh, which is um, also from the Portuguese Science Technology Foundation and also from the board of directors of the Portuguese Science and Technology Foundation and also part of the EOSC steering board. Uh, Paolo will talk about uh, EOSC um, European Partnership and the Association. Paolo, the word is yours. Thank you, Maria Luisa. Yes, well, uh, as you mentioned, I'm from the from the Portuguese Science and Technology Foundation, and also uh, uh, since the last uh, one or two months, member of the steering board. Um, and the, in this talk, I will focus on the on the European Partnership and Association. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, this slide, uh, Maria Luisa has already shown it on, on our presentation, but uh, uh, I would like to well to go back to the to the slide and uh, to really focus on some uh, uh, highlight some of the items of of this vision of the vision of building uh, uh, an eco ecosystem, a ecosystem collaboratively with all the stakeholders. This is something that was already mentioned and. Uh, referred in many of the on this morning uh, interventions and I think it's it's really 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 important to to, to focus on this and uh, in this ecosystem uh, there are uh, several uh, axes uh, develop a web of fair data and services the one on uh, reduce the fragmentation federating by federating the infrastructures uh, enable interdisciplinary research uh, support open science uh, uh, offer the researchers the digital resources they need to practice open science and stimulate the emergency of competitive uh, the European uh, cloud sector and uh, of course given Europe a global lead in research data. So this this is a, a, the big picture, the vision and um, associated with this vision we, well, we have, uh, well, there has been lots of work trying to, to identify the, the the, the objectives uh, of uh, associated uh, with this vision. And uh, this uh, is a slide already uh, also, uh, it's a previous slide, but uh, I think it's very, very, very important. It's a lot, lots of, lots of information in it, but uh, this is also the, the, the presentations will be uh, shared and uh, well, everyone that is uh, listening here can, can uh, later, go go back to the to the slides and uh, in more detail. So I will not go in all the details, but just saying that uh, having that that vision, then uh, the work was done uh, to identify the the, the objectives and uh, the starting with the problems. And there are three axes: people, data, and infrastructures. Uh, how can uh, people uh, really take exploit open science to improve quality? How can with data? How can researchers? Uh, find and use and, uh, and uh, reuse the, the, and, uh, the data and the results that were already published. Uh, and with infrastructures, how can we have this federation of, of, uh, of infrastructures? So the, the, with these three axes, uh, three main goals, three main objectives were identified. Um, this is the third line of objectives, uh, open science practice and skills uh, should be rewarded, and uh, I know that in chat uh, there were some questions about how to do this. This is, of course, uh, something that we have all to discuss and to implement uh, in the near future. Um, then the, the, on the data, we have need for standards, tools, service to allow researchers to do this fair data, to use the, the data in, the, in this fair uh, um, uh, philosophy <laughs> or methodologies and uh, and of course uh, if we have a sustainable and federated infrastructure this will enable the, the open sharing of uh, scientific results and this will have a strong impact in science industry and society of course and then um, for the next slide please and uh, again how, how, how to how, how can these goals be achieved and uh, the uh, as it was already mentioned in the in previous presentations, the, the idea is to have, well, to rely a lot on this partnership structure, but uh, which includes, of course, all the stakeholders and everyone. And so, and uh, the, the one of the key players of, uh, is the OSC Association, of course, and uh, uh, which is will sign this partnership agreement with the European Commission. And then we have also this, as was already also mentioned, this the tripartite. Um, the, the steering board members of the, uh, 
of the member states and the associated countries that uh, also are uh, in, the, in, in this relation and uh, can play also will play also a, a relevant role on this on this process. Um, so uh, this is a, por a process. Uh, well, we have here all the details. How, how, how we how we imagine or how, how we designed this to run uh, the member states at the relevant program will. Well, we'll give input and then there will be calls and all the things. This will be also uh, better uh, discussed uh, during the, the, the symposium. I will not go here into the details because I, I would like to focus on the partnership. So let's uh, move to the, yeah, to the, to the memorandum of understanding that uh, is uh, for, well, it's scheduled to be signed uh, uh, next week. Um, I think on 23rd, I think it's like that. Yeah, I think it's that's the date. And this slide was already also uh, uh, presented by uh, Maria Luisa. Then I, I have more more details on the next slides. But uh, so this the memorandum is this, between these two partners, the the, the European uh, Union represented by the Commission, and then the EOSC Association, which on the memo uh, it's called partners other than the than the Union. It's a contractual arrangement. Then they have uh, scope and objective, of course, of the of the memorandum. Uh, and they are identified activities and commitments of the Commission, and I'll go back to this one, and activities and com commitments from the EOSC Association. The Partnership Board, uh, you have this tripartite, okay, so we have uh, the, the Commission, the Association, and the representatives of the Steering Board. And uh, there is being uh, ongoing work on the, on the rules of procedures, and uh, it will be for kind of a medium term uh, period. Okay, so going to more details on this, on the activities and commitments uh, of the Commission. So uh, it, is, it was also uh, referred by Lynn and, and others that, well, uh, that it's really important it will be taken into account input and advice from the association, from all the members, from the community. Uh, in order to identify and define the, the, the call topics, the next call topics for research and innovation activities in the work programs. Okay, so that's that's one side. On, on the other side, of course, the OSC Association has to provide input and advice to the Commission. So that's that's the basis of this uh, collaboration of this of this partnership, and uh, and it's foreseen also uh, in kind contributions from. Uh, Horizon Europe and additional activities, and this is going to be uh, everything is going to be uh, monitored, and uh, and really also uh, from the, the the members of the of the association investments in the operational activities. This is what is foreseen in the memorandum of understanding is going to be signed, um, and the, the the of course the, the basic. Uh, well, behind all these, we have to focus on openness, transparency, dissemination, coordination, and this is well well highlighted and and, this, and uh, detailed on the memorandum. And uh, uh, a strong focus will be will be done on on monitoring and reporting uh, the, the ongoing activities and uh, what is being implemented and what is really really being done on this on this domain. And we will use a, a list of uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, to do this. I will give some examples uh, in some in some minutes. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, uh, in the there are many. Well, there are several uh, objectives that were defined on this memorandum. We have general ones and then specific and also operational. Uh, I will only talk briefly about the general uh, and the and the more specific. There are three general. Um, yeah, I will do this. Uh, there are three um, main general objectives. Uh, ensure that open science practices and skills are rewarded and taught becoming the new normal. This is very general, but of course it's a goal that we have, a uh, medium-term goal. Enable definition of standards, development of tools and service to allow researchers uh, to find access, reuse and combine results. Establish a sustainable and federated infrastructures enabling uh, open sharing of scientific results. So basically three goals represent a little bit the, the three axes that we have identified on the, on the, on the objects. Some examples, now moving on to some specific ones, uh, I will go uh, faster here, not into detail, we're being short of time now. So some specific objectives, increase the number of relevant research results that are made available as, possible, as open. Um, that increase the number of uh, uh, 
professional data stewards. This is a quite interesting and relevant point. Uh, development and adoption of incentives for researchers to perform open science. This was something that was already uh, Someone in the chat talked about this. Uh, increasing the, well, we have to increase the amount of research uh, in, uh, well, uh, that, that are fair. Um, the ESC uh, in interoperability frameworks which support, of course, all these fair digital objects. And um, this is, is also a specific objective. So the next one, please. And this is, uh, okay, just. Uh, Provide increased number of services, uh, EOSCO personalized and being stable as an infrastructure to support uh, the, the researchers. Um, well, develop additional functionalities. And then, uh, um, well, in, of course, EOSCO, this should, will, should also open and to, 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 to other, uh, well, to the collaboration with other initiatives in the world and, to be, and should be a, a global partner, okay? So for, then we have also uh, operational objectives. Now I'm not going to show them here, just for the, the I think it's more or less the final slide next. Um, the next one is just an example. There was also in the chat, someone asking for some examples. And, and we have for all these uh, goals that, that, were that were defined uh, KPIs. So this is just an example. Uh, then uh, later if someone is, well, in their memorandum, they are, they are defined and later I can give some more examples. But uh, uh, these are for the first goal. Well, we have to target by uh, 2023, 70% of the publications from the OSC Association uh, should be open access. Uh, the number uh, by 2025, the number of national educational systems that recognize European curricula for data stewardship, well, should be at least five in 2025. Um, the percentage of the, 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 of, of the organizations in the, the association uh, that have data stewards in 2025 should be at least 50 percent. Uh, um, well, and so on. So this is, these are just examples, but uh, there was they were identified and they are included in this memorandum uh, KPIs for all the, the objectives that were that were defined. Okay, uh, so this is uh, a very. Uh, I, I conclude just saying that. Uh, um, we all, and I think it's, I think the focus should be on the, we, we all, okay, it's not something that someone does, it's not a structure, it's, we all, all the stakeholders, the association, all the partnership, all the, all the people that are interested in, in this uh, domain, we all have this uh, big challenge and uh, we should all uh, collaborate in order to, to, to achieve this, these, these targets. Okay, thank you. It's the, next, the last one. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Maria Luisa. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Paolo. There are so many uh, questions in the in the chat that I really want to try to address at least some of them uh, from all of you, the panelists. Uh, there are some some general questions um, addressed to the Commission. Uh, first of all, how will the European Commission assess open access practices at the proposal level? Will expert evaluators be trained or will the or, uh, open science expert evaluate proposal only for that perspective? Nina, can you give um, an answer to this question from Emma Lazzari? And also if there are plans to propose a uh, European rewarding system. I don't know whether Lina is uh, still connected. Or not. Um, if not, um, there are some questions for um, Ute. Um, and um, and uh, I, I will try to, to, to address this uh, question to Ute. So members of task forces, um, about the members of task forces. Um, there is a question from Nicolas Villacorta who asked if uh, also colleagues from organization not belonging to the EOSC association are allowed to participate. Uh, and, uh, and Jordi Rambla also asked uh, if uh, would uh, task forces be open to everyone. 
Can you answer to this question, Ute, please? Yes, the call will be open to everyone and everyone is, let's say, eligible to apply. However, the, um, we want to make sure that, let's say, the participation is as large as possible in that respect, that everyone can only be a member of one task force and um, a preference will be then given also to the EOSC Association member. But in principle, it's open to everyone. Thank you, Ute. And there are also questions for Paolo. Uh, from uh, Stefan uh, Sergent. Apart embracing and endorsing the EOSC vision and adhering to its values and hopefully participating in the task forces, are there other obligations and responsibilities for organizations joining the EOSC partnership? Uh, I think it's more for the association because the organizations uh, can join the EOSC association. Okay, then the association is in the partnership. So uh, I think the, the should be a, a two steps like this. So the, the, the first, and my, maybe this is a question for Rute. First, they, 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 they joined the, the, the association, Oyosk Association. And then of course, being, as she pointed out in the, one of the slides, being in the association is being in the, in the partnership because the association then, then is, is one of the, of the signing uh, 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 members of the, the partnership. Maybe you two want to compliment, give some more. But answers. that's exactly what it is. I mean, the contractual partner for the European Commission is the association, and then the members of the associations are then indirectly basically um, contributing and participating in that. So we invite everyone to join, of course. And there is another question uh, related to the partnership. How is the bridge between the national implementation projects that will run until the end of 2022 and the EOS partnership or the project EOS future is going to be made? I think that this question is to Lina or Paolo. Um, one answer was, uh, has been done already by Fotis Karayanis uh, and the European Commission uh, uh, and this will be the European Commission in collaboration with uh, the key communities of stakeholders. I don't know whether you want to comment more, Paolo. One thing I can add is that, for instance, at the scope, in the scope of the, of the steering board, of the OSC steering board, we have already started a working group to, to, to monitor and to, well, first to identify and then to, to to monitor what is being done at the national level and and to well to be aware of that and see how this fits in how integrates with the, the, the European level activities. So yes, this is uh, something that's very relevant and uh, it's in our concern and we have start well starting to work towards the, the, this uh, this goal. And I know that at the association there are also initiatives on this on this topic, but uh, in the steering board we have created a, a specific working group for, for contacting and, and, and trying to, to, well, to have this information and to integrate all, all this. It's very important, of course, to not be replicating things and duplicating and, and uh, we have to be eff effective, of course, yeah. Uh, thank you, Paolo. I think that now uh, the microphone of Lina is um, uh, working now and Lina is available to comment. Lina, you want to comment about the question raised? On yes, Maria Luisa, I'm sorry. I had, I, I had to change channels, so I don't have the questions in my chat anymore. So do you mind one more time to repeat the question? Because I had to swap between two screens in the meantime, so I don't have any more the, the, the history of the chat in my, in my screen. Sure, sure. If you don't mind, yes. Yeah. How will the European Commission assess open access practices at the proposal level? Will expert evaluators be trained or will open science expert evaluate proposal only for that perspective. Okay, so for that, um, as these open access um, uh, principles are part of the work program, so everything which is there will be part of the evaluation. So the experts will be, of course, briefed on this uh, and, and it will be part of the evaluation criteria. So it's as simple as that. Everything which is in the work program uh, will be evaluated. Uh, if it's explicitly mentioned there, then that will be one part of the, the evaluation criteria. Uh, thank you. And also, if there are any plans to propose uh, European rewarding systems. 
Uh, that is probably more of a question to my colleagues at the DGRTD. I know that there are some activities in the next program that are aiming to reinforce this uh, rewarding uh, side, but uh, as um, I'm, I know that Costas is not in this session anymore, but uh, for those who are interested, why don't you join uh, the next session when we discuss more detail the work program and there is also this section on rewards, so we can now uh, we can take that discussion over there. Thank you very much. Um, uh, there is um, another question. We need the input involvement of scientists in, uh, in EOSC association, and uh, these discussions are often not really accessible to them. Uh, the EOSC activities are extremely confusing for people not internal to the system. How do you think we could make the EOSC association attractive to scientists? Ute, this question is for you. Oh, okay, it's my 15th day in the association, so <laughs> I guess then I will just take it on board in that sense. And as I said already in my presentation, I mean, we, we are working on, let's say, getting everything in place, also improving our communication to the members and also to the wider ecosystem. And this is, I guess, simply, uh, I mean, Claudia, it's on my list, <laughs> believe me. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Ute. Uh, actually, we now are really at the end of this uh, session. Uh, just in conclusion, I want to say that really EOSC will succeed if and only if it will uh, follow a multi-stakeholder approach. And uh, since the overarching principles is that research has to be at the center of the EOSC initiative, engagement with research communities is therefore fundamental to understand the requirements and to ensure that they're the way in which EOSC operates and the services offered directly benefit the researchers. Therefore, the engagement initiatives will be very important like this initiative today. So thank you very much for uh, attending this, this session. Uh, now we have uh, uh, a break and we will reconvene at 11 with the next session, future EOSC calls in um, Horizon Europe. Uh, with the presentation from the European Commission. Uh, again, a warm welcome to all of you uh, from myself and uh, on behalf of the US Association. And thank you very much to all the speakers for uh, the interesting presentations of this morning.